Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing NVIDIA's Lovelace architecture, as we actually have a major leak which has occurred, which seems to almost certainly indicate that NVIDIA have gone the same direction as AMD. Namely, they have basically just put a crap ton, that's a technical term, of cash on the die, a little bit like AMD's Infinity Cash, if you will. Now, before we get into the leak itself, there is a load of benefits of doing this just a couple of them include the fact that you don't need so much memory bandwidth from gddr6 or 6x memory you also have reduction in power consumption and so on in theory depending on the rest of the die because uh, you don't need so much memory on the chip such a wide interface memory interface but there are also other tangible benefits while a lot of stuff in graphics doesn't necessarily have the same latency dependency of let's say a cpu there are also jobs which do. So basically having um, a lot of cash on die, which could be, let's say, one or one and a half ter uh, terabytes per second of memory bandwidth, can benefit those operations considerably. So what is the actual leak that we're discussing here? Well, RTX 40, of course, is going to be launching around September. But while we have already had a number of leaks concerning these GPUs, including some of the core configuration, just recently, NVIDIA have been hacked. And with this hack, well, basically, the hackers decided just to release a ton of documents online. And what we have here is basically confirmation, quote-unquote. At the end of the day, this is not officially confirmed by NVIDIA. But it seems that the highest-end SKUs from RTX 40 will be equipped with 96 megabytes of level 2 cache. So that is a massive increase over what we have with Ampere. So basically, every um, every 64 bit of memory bus, we have 16 megabytes of cache. So again, that is absolutely tremendous. Now, if we go down the stack, according to what's been leaked, AD103 and 104 would receive 64 megabytes of cache, and then AD106 and 7, they would be equipped with 48 and then 32 megabytes the smaller quantity of course being for 107 now as you can imagine this would provide a ridiculous amount of additional memory bandwidth on the gpu itself and xeno assassin i think that's how you pronounce it was the first individual who actually leaked this again by digging through the technical documents that were uh let's use the word procured from nvidia there's also a tweet from Kopity7 Kimmy who has been pretty accurate previously with a plethora of things. And they've basically laid out the specifications now of all of the GPUs. Now you can see them on screen yourself. We'll go into a couple of them. AD102 is 12, 6, and then 384 bit. Of course, that would be the width of the memory bus. And it's going to be around 600 mm squared. Now, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've said that I've personally been hearing that uh, the highest end Lovelace SKUs are absolutely tremendously large and actually I'd mentioned a couple of times too that I had been hearing some rumors that there would be a pretty robust change in NVIDIA's cache system. Now personally I didn't think it actually applied to Lovelace. From what I understood there were some other changes that were occurring so I don't know whether my source was just wrong and it was actually Lovelace that this was applying to. Uh, as they said, it was a gaming-focused architecture, I want to be clear here, or whether this is just a preview of things to come, and there's even more changes in the pipeline, let's say for RTX, you know, uh, RTX 50 series, or whatever it ends up being called. For those, by the way, who are not so certain how to read the numbers that you see here from Kopity 7 Kimmy, for example, AD102 with 12.6, what this is basically referencing is GPC, uh, there's 12 GPCs, and the 6 represents TPC. So each TPC basically contains 2SM. So what you can basically do is take 12 times 6, 
and that obviously gives you a grand total of 72 using highly advanced mathematics here and then obviously you could multiply that again and then that gives you a grand total of 144. As I've mentioned numerous times, I am hearing that the RTX 40 series is going to be a major performance improvement over what we have with RTX 30. Personally, I've heard over two times, it's been like 2.2 to 2.4 times, and I'm hearing that uh, early samples are basically hitting somewhere in the neighborhood of around 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. Of course, whether this is going to be final clock frequencies and whether that's base frequency or boost frequency, I'm not certain. I don't believe that that is base frequency though. I'm just gonna level with you all. I think instead that this would be boost frequency of the chip. And while we are on the subject of NVIDIA, there is also another leak courtesy of, well, the very same hack. And this concerns a switch. As most of you know, NVIDIA have provided the architecture to Nintendo for the Switch, for the original Switch. And while it's pretty impressive what developers have managed to squeeze out of this point, out the lemon, it's pretty much obvious that you know there are limitations on the hardware itself the cpus are not exactly the most powerful things known to man memory bandwidth is uh the technical term poultry but there have been a load of rumors that nvidia are working alongside nintendo yet again to create a switch 2 or a switch pro or whatever you want to say well nikki i'll of course link their tweet in the description, has basically leaked a plethora of things concerning NVN2. And I'm going to read this verbatim, which seems to be a graphics API for Switch Pro based on Ampere, but with ray tracing support for DLSS 2.2. Now, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that a couple of times previously, in fact, I wrote a couple of articles, I believe, as well on the website, which I don't really update that much anymore. But still, I had been told, uh, I think it was like 2020 some point, I can't remember the exact time period, that NVIDIA were doing just this, that they were providing hardware for Nintendo um, for a Switch. In fact, I was also told that yeah, um, apparently one of the big things with DLSS as kind of a marketing ploy as well is that Nintendo allegedly were working alongside NVIDIA to really push um, DLSS for the console market. Now, I don't know what differences, if any, DLSS for the console would have over the PC. Personally, I don't really think there would be any, but that's what I'd been hearing. Now, I, from my understanding anyway, from the information I had back then, there'd been numerous kits, numerous configurations of hardware that Nintendo had been testing out. And this is not new. This is pretty typical for the industry. Even if you've decided, let's say for sake of discussion, to go with Nintendo, uh, with NVIDIA, like, and even a specific variant of graphics IP, what do you want? Do you want to go with higher clock frequencies on the CPU, GPU, what about, you know, a ton of other things on the system itself, you know, you have so many different things that you need to concern yourself, worry about, for example, battery life, uh, the cost of production, the actual ability to procure the materials, and so on, and so on, and so on. So what I'd personally been hearing is that there'd been a couple of variants that actually got an, um, to even uh, Nintendo's even internal testers, but then they basically just took the kits away, for lack of a better word. Now, I don't know whether that hardware is still going to come out or not, because at the end of the day, hardware can, like... <laughs> <laughs> there's a crap ton of projects that just never see the light of day but anyway i'd also mentioned at that point that i believe that it was elite architecture and it does indeed seem that these are custom orin designs which i believe i've mentioned in a video i can't remember which one but i'm sure you can search for it on the channel if you so wish this update though also seems to indicate that we're looking at 2048 CUDA cores, which again is based on Ampere, and there are 12 ARM Cortex A78 AE. These are Hercules, which is a terrific name, by the way, 64 bit cores. Can I just add that ARM, uh, ARM processor names are not 
they don't exactly roll off the tongue, do they? They're not like Ryzen 9 or something like that, where you can be like, okay, I can remember that. Maybe it's just me. Let me know in the comments. Can you remember the bloody arm names? I've, maybe it's just because I don't research them as much. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's my own ignorance. Either way, yeah. So these architectures, of course, would be a tremendous increase over what we currently have. The thing is, I don't know whether they're going to actually release, like whether they're going to release the Switch Pro, whether it's going to be an entirely new system. One of the things that I'd, I, I, I'd kind of heard mixed things about is whether the Switch Pro would be, let's say, like the PlayStation 4 Pro or the Xbox One X, you know, where the game obviously would work on the previous system, or whether it would be more like the Xbox Series X, for example, where you would have exclusive games, but then you would also have, of course, backwards compatibility. I'd heard mixed things. Um, and honestly, Nintendo have kind of done both before. Personally, at this point, I'm leaning towards exclusive titles, but that is a guess. That is not said with authority. And, um, Again, that's if they've not just scrapped the whole project. Um, Nintendo recently, I think it was an earnings call or something like that. I'm saying this from memory, but it was a recent report. They basically said that they were like halfway through roughly of the Switch's life. But that doesn't mean much because, you know, just for example, you have like the Xbox 360 was still selling when the Xbox One released. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't mean anything necessarily. Um, I'm going to be really curious to see what Nintendo does here. At the end of the day, like the next generation consoles, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox series, you know, they're, they're such a tremendous uptick in performance over their predecessors. Uh, the previously, of course, one of the one of the limiting factors, for example, of the Xbox uh, One was the the Jaguar CPUs. But then you've got like the ser Xbox Series, which has a tremendous increase in CPU performance. Same for the PlayStation 5. So. I suspect porting games is going to become trickier, let's say, over the next couple of years, particularly when new engines become prevalent. For example, UE5, although to be fair, it does have a good degree of scalability. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Apologies for not being on camera again for this episode. Um, I actually was supposed to be. Just to give you guys a quick update of what's been going on long story short uh obviously the channel got hacked last week which was a whole thing and then i've been kind of dealing with a leak in my flat i actually thought it was fixed uh not so much let's just say that and then i was away for a little bit over the weekend now i'm back but the leak is like yeah let's say worse um, so I don't need anything, like everything's cool, there'll be a plumber hopefully coming tomorrow, <laughs> and hopefully resolving this bloody issue, uh, so the reason I'm not recording today isn't because, you know, I'm sick or anything like that, it's just I've been waiting for the plumber to call, and it was the whole thing, so I just haven't really been able to sort things out, because I didn't want to kind of get things ready for camera, and then the plumber turn up in the middle of recording, and that type, you know what it's like, guys, it's like, you, some, days you, you, some days just don't go how you expected, but everything's cool, I'm, I'm alive, I am kicking, and I hope the same is said for all of you as well, hopefully you're all safe and sound. With that said, thank you very much for watching the video, I will see you soon, take care of yourselves, bye for now.